is Zane Full James, Chief Executive of NZ Bus. There's all these people standing up. Zane, which one are you? <laughs> So note your questions down, and uh, when Zane's had his say, uh, we'll open up the floor again. Thank you. Sure. I'm delighted when my name gets tossed out that there are more than one of me that stands up. Um, look, I guess to understand the future, uh, where I've started from and we've started from as a team, you've got to understand the current state. Um, so when we think about the current state from a macro sense, uh, these are the types of things at NZ Bus that we think about. Passenger transport, passenger transport, um, is a 10 trillion euro spend annually, which is a huge number. There are a number of growth uh, or number of drivers that affect passenger transport and we look at each of those and there were, f there were four uh, pretty key drivers and a fifth one that's emerged over the last little while. Um, we look at the environmental drivers um, in terms of global warming, carbon pricing, emission standards and what we see is in, in, in that particular stream uh, is increased demand but with tighter emission standards. When we look at demand we look at you know, factors such as the rise of mobility, um, congestion, increasing congestion, and the continued growth that comes from that uh, in demand and public transport. We look around the globe at the various regulatory models, uh, the contracting models that are emerging, uh, shaping, reshaping. Um, we look at privatisation, we look at buyback. Uh, what we continue to see are evolving contracting models in more mature markets. And we look at consolidation, so here I'm talking about the competitive environment, the competitive landscape globally. Um, we look at expansion from the big players, um, and we look at regional consolidation, and typically what we see is that the big players get bigger and the smaller players get, get acquired. Um, now what we have seen more recently, and when I say more recently, over the last 12 to 18 months, um, the modes and technology drivers you know, really started to come into the frame in terms of weighting. And when we're talking about that, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the conversation around infrastructure, around light rail, around heavy, heavy rail, um, around social transport, um, around electric vehicles and around driverless vehicles. A really live, vibrant, positive conversation that we, we've started to see emerge. Um, so from a public transport perspective and as a bus operator, those are the things that we look at globally. Um, just in terms of modes and technologies, I mean, it's, it's probably the best time to be in transport ever. Um, there's just so much going on. Um, we look at what's happening in terms of innovation, uh, the startups that are out there, uh, the likes of Tesla, uh, what Bosch, GM, the likes of Mobileye, Lyft, Uber, um, and, and a thousand other rideshare type companies. I mean, how they're thinking about passenger transport. And when we think about what's happening in that particular space, and we translate that back into uh, public transport, um, then I start to think about my business and how this could potentially impact uh, our future and what we do. So if I look at the New Zealand context, so in New Zealand there are 9,500 buses. Those 9,500 buses burn 104 million litres of diesel per annum. Across Auckland and Wellington there are about 2,500 buses operating in the urban space. They pump out about 117,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide per annum. Um, they consume about 28 million litres of diesel. We're right in the middle of a procurement process. So over the next two years, about 450 odd million dollars is going to be invested in new public transport fleet. Um, so when I think about the environment that we're operating in, there are lots of moving parts. There are lots of opportunities to be disrupted, and there are lots of opportunities to be a disruptor. 
That's actually a pretty cool photo of uh, the Kilburnie Depot. Um, now, I guess when I started thinking about our future, I'll just describe what, how we saw the current state. Um, where I pretty quickly got to was I've got 1,200 buses. 1,140 of those are diesel buses. And if electric vehicle technology is coming down the pipeline at a rapid rate of knots, which it is, um, and I've got 1,200 diesel buses and the future of the world's electric, then I've got a bit of a problem. Um, now, I could stick my head in the, in the sand and, and ignore uh, what is real and what is right coming down the pipeline, um, or we could look at what the options are for us to transition through. Um, some of the challenges for us in terms of thinking about that space, uh, New Zealand is a relatively small market. Uh, there are a limited number of operators uh, of sufficient scale to make necessary investment. Um, the procurement uh, environment, you would argue, probably doesn't incentivise investment uh, versus it's actually potentially driving some costs down. And all the logistical, technical considerations that you, know, you think would have to take into play. So um, the way I looked at this was, you know, and, I, and I'll quote uh, a pretty famous philosopher, uh, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. So that's Dr. Zeus, which I thought was pretty cool. So where I got to, um, and this actually freaked the bejesus out of my team when they came back from leave. So if you can imagine, I run a diesel bus business. Um, I've spent a little while thinking about the macro landscape, the domestic landscape. Uh, my team come back from leave, and the first thing I say to them is, we're never going to buy another diesel bus. Um, which, there are many different shades of white uh, that come from that. <laughs> so the very obvi obvious question that comes from my team to me is, okay, so what are we going to do? I said, I have no idea. But we're not buying another diesel bus. Um, so let's get out there and let's have a look what's available on market. One that will deal with our existing fleet, um, and one that would potentially address the acquisition of new fleet uh, as, as we move forward through a contracting model. Because um, the other uh, horrific thing for us to appreciate was you buy a diesel bus, it has a 20-year life. Uh, my best guess is it'll be dead within five or six years. You have contract terms that are six, nine, 12 years, so do the maths. If I buy a 20-year asset, half a million bucks, the contracting environment will take care of that itself and I'll end up with a very expensive stranded asset. So my team scanned the globe and we looked at all sorts of things, things that uh, everybody in this room would have looked at. Um, uh, diesel hybrids, full electric buses, uh, link that back into the regulatory environment that we have in New Zealand. Um, and I was really interested in Tesla and I kept on banging away at my team to go and have a look at what Musk was doing. One, because I think it's pretty cool. You get to build a big factory in the middle of nowhere, um, attach lots of, lots of solar panels and a wind farm next to it, and pretty clever in terms of technology. Because um, I figured out that we couldn't go and buy 25 million Teslas to carry the 60 million people we carry per annum as much as I would have liked to. Um, so where we got to is we well, I stumbled across a guy called Ian Wright. Um, and Ian Wright is a New Zealander uh, who's been up in the States for a little while, uh, co-founder of Tesla, um, and came up with a pretty interesting concept around an electric powertrain with a range extender to deal uh, to those who have range anxiety issues, the, the men amongst us. Um, and we thought it was a pretty good application. In fact, we know it's a, it's a very good application that will deal with our existing fleet. And um, what that means is we'll take a right speed powertrain We'll pull the diesel engine out and we'll put that powertrain into those existing uh, buses that we're keeping in our fleet. Um, and as new fleet comes into our business, we'll install a right speed powertrain in those also. So not only have we dealt with our existing fleet or our stranded asset risk, uh, we're working forward in terms of new fleet as well. Uh, if, I look at the, if you look at the uh, slide up there in the top right hand corner, you see uh, an MOT slide, so thank you Martin and his team. Uh, on the left hand side you've got a typical petrol engine or an ICE. The right hand side you've got a full battery electric vehicle. Right speed sits just adjacent to that as a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle um, that's range extended. And that range extension is fuel agnostic. 
uh, can be diesel, can be biofuel, can be landfill gas, can be methane. Uh, importantly for, uh, for myself and my team, as battery technology improves over time, uh, we foresee a future where the range extender is removed and it's just replaced with another battery black pack. Um, so that's the future as it relates to electric vehicles, but that's not the future as we see it at New Zealand Bus. And I guess what we're transitioning towards is a world where we do have autonomous vehicles in play, uh, where we do have mobility as a service uh, alive and well, uh, where we do see the rideshare companies uh, operating in a complementary way to mass transit. Um, and I guess the investment that we've made in ride speed, um, the investment that we'll make in new fleet, um, the protection or, or reduction, mitigation of the risk that we have around our existing fleet uh, allows us to get there rapidly. Um, so those are the types of issues that, uh, and challenges and opportunities that we're dealing with at New Zealand Bus. Um, really nice picture of Courtney Place as you look back down it. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a really vibrant, colourful city that we live in. Um, with the right speed vehicles, uh, we can run those powertrains full EV through the core of the city or down any route that is determined or agreed with uh, our partners. Um, some data around NOx emissions, PM, carbon monoxide emissions and unburnt hydrocarbon. Um, that's Euro 3 through to Euro 6 and you'll see right speed uh, on my right hand side. Um, so very, very good outcomes in terms of emissions reduction, noise reduction. Um, Simon Bridges uh, a little while ago said this, as we transition to a lower carbon economy, we need to broaden our renewable energy use beyond electricity and increase its use in transport sectors. It's great that Kiwi companies are increasingly seeing the value in this and getting on board with going electric. There are two things that I was quite excited about. Um, in the last few months. One, we're at, we're at the, uh, the edge, the cusp of the fourth industrial revolution. I always wanted to be part of a revolution. Um, so I guess we get our chance. The second is, is some relief because when I take what we're doing to my board and I ask them for significant amounts of capital to change the face of my business, um, and as a CE of a public transport business that has 1,200 diesel buses and I tell my board that I'm not buying any more diesel fleet. And then I follow that up very quickly with them, uh, to them, don't have a Kodak moment here, fellas. Um, and then they then support um, wholeheartedly the direction that we're going in. And then I come to an event like today where there's fabulous energy, excitement uh, in the room about the future of electric vehicles. And then as I say, the, the, the world that we see uh, merging from that in terms of autonomous, autonomous vehicles, uh, the relief comes in. They've probably got a job for another six to 12 months at least. So, <laughs> thank you for your time. Um, I think we're really at the cusp of something special here. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.